Tommy Brown. My time with uh, Deputy Catherine Connolly uh, when she comes into the Dáil. Can I say, in the first, uh, initially, I mean, I'm delighted to be able to contribute uh, briefly on the, uh, the Housing Regulation Approved Housing Bodies Bill 2019. And can I say at the outset uh, that I agree uh, very strongly with the comments that have just been made by our colleague, uh, the chairperson of the uh, Public Counts Committee, uh, that um, the state-funded properties uh, should ultimately, uh, you know, reside with the state. Um, and and that's, that certainly applies to all voluntary bo uh, projects, which lots of us in this House have been involved in over the years. But at the end of the day, uh, you have to ensure that either memorandum and articles or uh, the actual um, granting of monies ensures uh, that um, um, the state, the people of Ireland, at the end of the day, you know, uh, are, are, uh, are the owners of the properties concerned. So um, that's, a, that's a point uh, I would like to echo, because uh, people have often... Uh, you know, being fearful in community projects um, like housing, uh, housing uh, co-op developments that somehow or other uh, the co-op could be alienated uh, into the private sector uh, and that the state and the community would lose out. Uh, so having said that, though, I, I would like to, um, uh, to commend generally the, the work of the approved housing bodies and the voluntary housing organisation, um, and in particular, I suppose, with regard to their estate management. I think over the years, certainly our experience over the last quarter century in Dublin Bay North and my old Dublin North East constituency has been that um, the approved housing bodies have an outstanding record in estate management and that can, can be compared of course to the the, the similar record of Dublin City Council uh, in estate management, which the Minister will know because he represents a Dublin constituency, has been generally very poor um, and just hasn't been up to standard and, and you know, has allowed developments of antisocial behaviour in districts and so on and so forth that should never have, have started or happened had there been a proper estate management and management si uh, maintenance system implemented by the Dublin City Council local authority, which, I, which of course is a very large um, uh, it's a very large housing authority with, I think, about 28,000 properties, in fact, nearly as many properties even still as all of the housing, uh, voluntary housing bodies uh, put together. But as I said, in DBN, in Dublin Bay North, uh, yeah, we've had a, um, you know, a very impressive history over the years, I think, since... Uh, now, obviously, we've had housing co-ops, as the can will uh, know, uh, all over the country. And uh, I remember an important co-op in the Kilbarrick area going back many, many years. Uh, but certainly in the last 25 years, with the arrival, I think, of, of the National Association of NABCO uh, and the arrival of Hale Housing Association for Integrated Living, uh, they were followed, I think, by organisations. I think Minister Michael Smith in the mid-90s actually went to, went to the UK uh, last can, and he asked uh, some of the voluntary housing bodies to come over to Ireland and St Pancras came and they were set up of course after the First World War uh, to provide housing for soldiers returning from the horrors uh, of the Western Front uh, and so on. And St Pancras of course became Cluid, uh, which we are very familiar with uh, in the Dublin region. Uh, we have also had uh, other outstanding bodies such as Respond, which I think uh, was at the Capuchins. Uh, Capuchin Religious Order were, were first responsible for. Uh, we have Tuha, uh, we have the Fold organisation, which the Minister and I uh, were happy to inspect just a few weeks ago in our constituency, are providing really wonderful accommodation uh, for, for, uh, for senior citizens in DBN on the Tonaghy Road. So uh, it's a long history. You know? I don't, obviously, there are other housing bodies as well that have done uh, very well over the, over the years, some of whom, uh, many of whom, of course, wouldn't be in Dublin Bay North. Um, so, as I said, I've always been really impressed with the management of their estates uh, uh, in particular, which, is, particular, which has generally been far superior uh, to the similar services of Dublin uh, City Council. Um, generally, uh, uh, of course, I do believe that a key housing uh, policy should be, uh, as I think uh, outlined in his recent book uh, by the deputy here in front of me, uh, by Deputy Owen O'Brien, uh, it, it it's also what I, what I strongly believe that we should return uh, to properly funding and resourcing local authorities, um, uh, perhaps directed by a national housing executive, to embark on a major plan uh, of local authority housing, uh, of, 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 of local authority and national housing. I don't see any other way, and I think deputies will agree, there is no other way uh, to addressing the horrendous uh, housing crisis, which week in and week out and day in and day out um, um, you know, impacts so badly on, on, on people. Uh, as the previous deputy said, there are 551 bodies, I think, listed on the register of housing bodies with approved status, but it's disappointing, of course, I know there were the smaller bodies that just 273 of them had signed up to the uh, voluntary regulation code, the, the VRC, um, but of course the, the 273 which did sign 
line up um, uh, comprise something like 95 per cent of the uh, total housing stock. And according to the Housing Agency Regulation Office, of course, the report of nine, their report 2017, there were 18 three, uh, Tier 3 approved housing bodies which share 23,117 um, uh, units of the, of the total amount of, of um, AHB um, homes. Um, so I, I note um, that in your speech from last night, Minister, you said there were 552 AHBs and 274 registers registered, but that means, again, just under 50 per cent, in fact, have registered. So the bill before us, of course, provides for the establishment uh, of the approved housing body's regulatory authority, and of course, it's long overdue because I think we were asking for this, Minister, in this House. I can remember asking uh, the Cowan government, uh, maybe the Ahern government, uh, then subsequently the Kenny government. Uh, so all the way through, for many years, uh, you know, we, we've, we thought because of the uh, huge expenditure, and of course, uh, like yourself, I'm a former member on two occasions, I think in two dolls, of the Public Counts Committee, and we felt that there has to be uh, you know, serious uh, regulation uh, of, of the sector. Uh, so um, it's good, uh, I'm delighted really, that the uh, regulator will now be placed on a statutory footing and that uh, a full and legal regulatory um, uh, regime will be put in place. And we've had the various moves uh, over the last number of years. So the, look, at the Voluntary Regulation Code, I've referred to the Regulation Office in 2014, the, the Financial Standard and the Objectives in 2015, and the Governance Standard in 2017, of course the Performance San, Standard in December 2018, but still uh, we, we needed uh, this legislation. Um, and of course you have given the, the AHB's Minister very ambitious targets um, as part of rebuilding Ireland. Uh, they're, they're expected to access finance and provide I think at least a third of the 50,000 homes targeted by uh, 2021. Uh, and of course also as employers of a large number of uh, of housing agency staff and, and landlords, uh, you know, statutory regulation is important and it's really uh, very long overdue, not just for the tenants but of course uh, also for the um, organisations uh, themselves. Um, and um, uh, since 2011, of course, the, as again another colleague mentioned, the Capital Advanced Leasing Facility, CAF, has been providing 30 per cent of funding to AHBs, other funding stre streams that are reported uh, to be the HSE, 40 per cent, and the Dublin Regional Housing Executive, uh, TUSLA, the Department of Justice and Equality and the Department of Social Protection. So it underlines the point, I think, that the Chairperson of the Public Accounts Committee um, uh, you know, uh, ha has been making uh, and the, the, the necessity for regulation and the necessity also to ensure that uh, this, this great tranche of state property uh, funded by this state, that it remains in, in public ownership. Uh, Section 9, Part 2, of course, of the Bill sets out the functions of the regulator, which will include uh, preparing drafts, st standards, monitoring and assessing compliance, collecting and publishing uh, information concerning AHBs uh, and also of course uh, the, I think the, the um, regulator of course will appear at the Public Accounts Committee which is also uh, valuable. Uh, at the end of February this year I think Dr Donald McMahon, a CEO of the Irish Council for Social Housing, he presented to the Public Accounts Committee on AH AHBs and social housing uh, and of course um, as part of the submission we learned that um, that there were around 33,000 AHB homes across the country. Uh, so it's a huge estate, as I said, now bigger than Dublin City Council. I think, I'm not sure of the actual uh, size of uh, the Minister will know of some of the individual estates of uh, housing bodies, but I remember when Clwyd had just over 5,000 units, uh, or was passing, I think, the 5,000 mark, which is, you know, it's, it's bigger than a lot of county councils. Um, and it's a huge responsibility, obviously, for, uh, for the regulator to manage um, and maintain uh, those properties all around the country uh, over the years um, and of course uh, the submission I referred to included a summary of the results of the Housing Association Performance Management Survey um, uh, which, which also gave us uh, some valuable information. It's impressive to note Minister for example that less than 5% of rent receivable uh, was outstanding as rent arrears uh, and uh, you know only 33 of the 69 reporting uh, reported uh, having rent arrears and we know again as former city councillors, uh, that uh, you know, the huge, uh, there was huge issues of rent arrears in the city estate uh, and, and in the Fingal estate uh, in, in my own constituency uh, over the years. Uh, so, uh, and, and also there were, there were impressive, um, impressive findings in relation to repairs completed or responded to within targeted timescales, uh, which again also contrasts unfortunately uh, with the performance of, uh, of Dublin City Council under its present management uh, structure. Um, and um, good estate management, 
the average length of time I notice units were void, talking about voids, was, was 8.3 weeks in 2017. Um, and I recall, of course, that a large housing voluntary body actually contacted me uh, last year, uh, uh, last can, uh, to ask me uh, to, to pursue the local authority because they were so slow, Minister, in making nominations to a newly built apartment complex where, where we had over 50 apartments, uh, like a really precious resource for people desperate for rehousing, and they'd been lying idle for about four months. Um, and and uh, the, the, the housing body uh, turned to, uh, to myself to, to ask the local authority to get a move on. So that shouldn't happen. I mean, you'd imagine, again, that uh, you know, it should be progressed uh, really, really, really fast. Um, so I know there's the, the history, of course, of the of, um, housing associations. There is an impressive history uh, across many countries. In the, in the UK, I think, uh, there's something like the National Housing Federation has something like two and a half million homes. Um, but I mean, the UK went through a similar experience from the Thatcherite era where Thatcher absolutely refused. She tried to get rid of the whole housing, national housing estate and then she, tried, she refused to allow local authorities to actually build out uh, estates. And unfortunately, as in so many things in Las Cian, uh, we, copied, we copied the English uh, and embarked down the kind of road where you are wrestling uh, with 140,000 people on housing lists and in Hap Minister and with 10,000 citizens tonight uh, who are homeless. Uh, so having, said, having made those few remarks, um, I think that um, generally, as I said, I, I, do, I do believe we should have embark on a new local authority and national housing programme. It should be the key priority of the, of the next government in this House. Uh, but I do welcome this very belated uh, appoint, you know, appointment of a regulator for, for this territory. I mean, it's amazing that there has been the build-up of such a large number of homes uh, and that we didn't have a formal regulation system. But very belatedly, I welcome the fact that you've now introduced this bill. Uh, thanks, Ken.